a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. Full AccuWeather weather forecast right across the top of all CNC local news pages. A much better forecast today. We'll get back to that. New York State and the Seneca Nation of Indians have settled their long-running disagreement over casino gaming operations in western New York. The agreement reaffirms the Seneca's exclusive right to operate casinos in the region from western New York through Rochester. The Seneca's will resume paying $135 million a year to the state and will pay out $408 million they had been withholding since the dispute began. The Seneca's said New York State broke its agreement when it allowed three racetracks in their exclusive territory to add video slot machines and bill themselves as racinos. The racinos will now be allowed to operate as long as they don't identify themselves as casinos. An already waterlogged Rochester area picked up another one to two inches of rain on Thursday. Things are clearing out Friday. Saturday should be sunny before we get back to the chance of more rain and thunderstorms on Sunday. So far this June, we've had nearly four and a half inches of rain, and that is more than three inches greater than average for the entire month. Farm fields are flooded, and all that water has to run downhill. On Thursday, it did in the town of Rush. Water ran down East Henrietta Road, flooding basements of homes and businesses. These shots come from the Rush Fire Department, and they pretty much tell the story. In their words, rain began coming down in buckets at 8 a.m. The streams that fed Honeyoy Creek and the Genesee River were flowing like no one had ever seen before. At 12.30, the calls started coming in. Rush had 15 water in basement calls. Several were for 8 feet of water. Two ambulance calls and one gas leak in a six-hour period. Rush firefighters took care of these with help of pumps from East Avon and Henrietta Fire Departments. National Grid had to cut the power to several homes for safety reasons. At 2 p.m., we had three feet of water on Route 15A at Route 251. This has never happened before, even during Hurricane Agnes in 1972. By 9 p.m., things were back to normal, all except for cleaning up. Speaking of water levels, the International Joint Commission that tries to regulate Lake Ontario is holding a series of public hearings on its plan to regulate the lake less. The U.S. and Canadian body that manages water levels and flows for Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River is proposing to let the lakes rise and fall more naturally. Water levels depend a great deal on rainfall, snowpack, and storms across the Lake Ontario region, but they're also partly controlled by the hydro dam on the St. Lawrence at Messina. The IJC says smoothing out the natural rise and fall of the lakes has benefits, but it's also changed the natural environment, damaging wildlife. The people who own property along the lake shores are afraid they'll be the ones damaged by this plan. Many in towns like Hamlin have already built their own breakwaters to keep the lake from taking their backyards, and they're afraid the water will be in their homes if it rises much higher and then a storm hits. The closest hearing on this plan to Rochester will be in Wayne County at the Williamson Central High School Auditorium on Route 21. It is Tuesday evening, 6 to 9, and speakers can register on site starting a half hour before the meeting. You can find more on the International Joint Commission website, IJC.org. A judge has annulled the Irondequoit law requiring boaters not to anchor within 300 feet of private shoreline. The ordinance was adopted last summer after homeowners with private beaches in the Seabreeze area complained the boaters were anchoring just off their property and partying too late into the night. The Irondequoit Town Board responded with a law requiring the boaters to keep at least 300 feet offshore. A group of boaters hired attorney Alan Knopf and sued the town. Knopf says the court has ruled the town failed to conduct an environmental review of the law and failed to meet the state's public hearing requirements, and so it was overturned. While boaters are now free to moor closer to shore, they still have to stay off private property. The Rondequoit Town Supervisor Mary Joyce DeRizio says the town will discuss its next step at a meeting Tuesday. A Southern Tier man is recovering at Strong Memorial Hospital in Rochester after his house exploded. State police in the town of Horseheads say 36-year-old Brian Marr was injured but is expected to recover. Their investigation so far indicates a failure inside the house caused a gas leak and that eventually caused the explosion. 
State Police, the New York State Office of Fire Prevention, the State Public Service Commission Gas Safety Staff, Shemung County Fire Investigators, and NYSEG are continuing their investigation into what went wrong. The U.S. Attorney for Western New York says a federal grand jury has indicted a Rochester man with making bomb threats against Eastman Kodak. The grand jury indicted 31-year-old Omer Fadel Saleh Mohammed of four counts of making a false bomb threat. Each charge carries a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison. The indictment says Mohammed made three calls to 911 on September 24th and told the operator terrorists were going to blow up Kodak. A fourth call on January 24th claimed explosives had been hidden around Rochester. Each call triggered emergency responses. Mohammed was arrested in February after an FBI investigation and is being held pending arraignment. And a Wayne County man who got caught up in a federal crackdown on the sale of counterfeit merchandise has pleaded guilty in the federal court. U.S. Attorney William Hochul says 33-year-old Ryan Breen of Savannah was selling unauthorized merchandise branded with the FX network TV series Sons of Anarchy logo. Breen had several websites offering t-shirts and other goods with the fictional motorcycle gang's logo, all used without permission of 20th Century Fox, and he sold more than $75,000 worth of the counterfeit merchandise. Federal agents have now seized his website and his assets. He faces sentencing in the fall. He could be looking at 10 years in prison. To the left of the player window are links to these and other stories. At the bottom of the page, links you can use to post news and information directly to us. Next news is as it happens, updates as necessary. And that means we'll see you Monday unless something big happens. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.